Welcome back, football fans. There are a lot of really good teams, and it's, it's just one of those times. It's going to be fun, man, and, I, and I've, I've been... A lot of style, a lot of speed, a lot of talent across the board. He's, you know, he's that general out there that's that, uh, and he can sling it. And Welcome back. Football fans to the South Jersey Football Frenzy Show here at Studio B. This is the final show of the year. We're going to talk about the state finals, and we're going to talk about a whole lot of other stuff, too. It is always difficult to say goodbye. We always put the bow on it here in this final show, Mac. Welcome in, man. We're not going to whiteboard the wing tee, but we got a lot of wing tee to talk about today. Yeah, well, the wing tee showed its stuff over the last couple of weeks, and especially over the weekend, a lot of... Finished up with a frenzy. <laughs> a little bit of a frenzy. I love it, Mac. Um, I got a lot of good feedback, man, from, from your wing tee segment, especially... Stop. At, yeah, at Rutgers, uh, was some fans were saying, like, we really love that. I, I bet you cannot guess what colors they were wearing. Uh, red th- and white. You think? And uh, green and white. <laughs> they said, we love that wing tee stuff, and uh, they should. They had a, a great weekend for South Jersey and, and a great weekend for that offense. Rod, when you know when a wing tee guy's been on a board when it just looks like scribble <laughs> right, yeah. right in the middle. A lot, of, a lot of circles, a lot of scribble. They say, is Matt going to get on the whiteboard again this week? I'm like, uh, I, I even had a coach who shall remain nameless say, we should kind of have our own that a special show that's just that type of stuff, just a coach's corner through the season. So maybe Mac, we can find someone with some some deep pockets and make it happen, man. I know uh, golfing is not cheap. First off, folks, let's talk about the people who brought us here all year, the West Jersey Football Coaches Association. Want to give a shout out to them. They were established to promote, improve, and unite football in South Jersey, and in less than three years. The association has done just that. They created the Battle at the Beach and dedicated themselves to helping others. They've donated more than $50,000 to date to provide scholarships through the National Football Foundation and the Touchdown Club of Southern New Jersey. The group has also donated to the charity Philly Faces, which helps those in need of facial reconstruction surgery. Thank you to the West Jersey Football Coaches Association for your sponsorship of the show. Also want to shout out our buddy Dave O'Sullivan, sjglorydays.com. You might be watching on his Facebook page. He has a lot of great coverage, photo galleries, stories from the state finals on Sunday at Rutgers, including a lot of mainland content. I mean, it seems like not that long ago when Josiah Buntings uh, was our game of the week, Mac, and we were talking about mainland, and they were coming out of nowhere a few years ago, and now they have reached uh, the type of status that – no one has reached, right? 14 and 0? No one has reached, man. 14 and 0. Yeah. Um, incredible. So, first, let's talk about these games kind of at a higher level, Mac. And we had the games Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday were the state finals. Sunday, we start out in the morning, 11 a.m. Glassboro in the first one in Group One Championship. They lose to Mountain Lakes 24 to 6. The Glassboro offense, which this season struggled to get sure, it together. Yeah. They thrived on turnovers, special teams, things like that. I don't think they forced a the turnover in this game, well, and, I, I, and they just qu- couldn't quite get the big play. No. Mountain Lakes was was definitely keyed up. Well, yeah. Well, Lakes is I, I le- Lakes had seen junior, senior laden team, yes, right? Yes. So um, I don't want to say the the glass slipper fell off the shoe, but like the freshmen, the young guys. You know, like they, they just, like you said, they just couldn't pull out that play, that that pick six or something yeah. to spark them going. And that happens when you play a seasoned team like Mountain Lakes. Um, you know, give Mountain Lakes a lot of credit, right? They they were poised. I mean, I think if 
you know, you, you're, depends on what side of uh, 195 you live in the state. You, you probably thought Mountain Lakes was going to win this thing the, most of the year. Um, down south, we thought maybe Glassboro would come up with a couple things. But Timmy yeah. Breaker, they did it unbelievable. I mean, I, don't, I hate to say overachieved because they were – I'm hoping they can, after the state final, take a step back right. realize they sure. won a sectional. They, they won the south. It was a great year for them. And they got a lot coming back and, you know, a lot in front of them too. They, Mac, they do have a lot coming back, and this Glassboro team was finding ways all season. What I was impressed about with Mountain Lakes, uh, and I know Dwayne had texted me, our, our faithful fan up here, uh, had texted me during the game that Mountain Lakes punter really was up for hat, hat winner because he kept down in Glassboro inside their 10, inside their 5, really did a great right. job. But in the fourth quarter and late in the third quarter, Marco Zamba was the guy who definitely proved the part. I mean, he... Forced a fumble on a punt. He blocked one earlier in the game. He forced a fumble on a punt. He recovered it for a touchdown. He had an interception. He had another forced fumble, and he ran for a two-point conversion. Um, he was truly an incredible player to watch, and he, he was good last year, too, for them. When I saw them against Woodbury, I thought he was their best player. But this kid, uh, one thing I love about it is, you know, we he did get the hat. I know... Folks are unclear on who's getting the hat and who's not. If I'm at the game, somebody's getting the hat now. We changed that last year with the true state champions. He got the hat, and what I loved about it is we had to wait to take the picture until he stopped crying. He was so happy. That he got a hat. And these guys he had played his whole life oh. with. They had played <laughs> together since third grade. This team, very a small town, tight community. I was very happy for him and happy for Mountain Lakes. Now, Glassboro, you know, you say... They got a lot back, and they do. They have freshmen, sophomore laden. They had some key senior leaders as well, but that's never a given. No, um, you oh, know, yeah. and you know, last year at this time, you're saying, well, and you know, everything plays out in real time. You're saying Millville will probably be back here, and they weren't that far from it, but they didn't make it. Uh, you you know, you never know what's going to happen. So, I think that's the the lesson to Glassboro is earn your way back here and have that chip on your shoulder to get back. Instead of, well, we might be able to, you know, we've got some years to figure, we'll get back here. Dan Marino went to a Super Bowl in his second season, right? Never again. And he was one of the best quarterbacks anybody had ever seen. And they said, he'll be back. And he never was. Oh. And so you, you never know. I mean, maybe in that, that Lays commercial when he's kind of like right. wobbling around. And, that, and that's around the thing, that. too. These guys, these kids, they're young. They don't know. That you, you, you can't. You can't make a freshman feel like a senior. Right. It just you just can't. I mean, that's not a shot at freshmen. There is something about a finality of senior junior senior year. There, you know, obviously junior year another year, but there is that when you know it's the last run, there's a little more, you know, anybody who's ever run a 400 knows that you you, you try you're squeezing a little bit out at the end and that's really yeah. what, you know, what these seniors do in these final games. Yeah, it's it's I mean, I'm going to kind of bring it back home. Um, the year that Timber Creek lost to Delcy uh -huh. at Timber Creek, yeah. picking my son up, he gets in the car, and I'm like, how you feel? He's like, oh, I'm good. We'll be back. And I, I, and I said to him, like, it's not definite. I'm right. not sure. Yeah. They never made it back. Yeah. You know, and, and when he finally won one in college, he was like, he said he brought that moment up. Dad, remember when you, we were in a car? Well, I finally got one. Yeah. You know what I mean? But it, it 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 took him another four years to even get an opportunity. So don't take that moment for granted when you're in those championship games. And just because you have a young team doesn't automatically put you back there. Because if we were all betting men, like Mark said, the Millvilles, we probably would have put money on mm -hmm. early in the season. Woodbury was rolling. Yeah. So we thought they were going to be back right. there. Sure. You know, it's, it's great it's, point, Rob. It's, yeah. you know, one of those things. And, we all know. And, you know, I thought that uh, what Glasper accomplished this season was pretty incredible. And the way that they got there was incredible. And I, you know, in, not that they weren't supposed to be there, but the way that they got there and that defense that was so stingy for so long this season, um, you know, and really special teams hurt them more than their defense did in this championship game. I mean, right. two touchdowns directly off punts, uh, punt blocks, or whatever. And, you know, they had a punt return for touchdown in that state semifinal against Woodstown. So 
you know, they, they weren't in the positive in the turnover differential. Special teams led to two touchdowns. And, you know, they did score on the last play of the game in a pretty cool play with a lateral to Lassiter, who ran in his last play of his, his career. That was beautiful. But uh, still, there was not enough offense in the game for them. Now, the game at 2 o'clock, Mac, there was a lot of offense for South Jersey in this one. Mainland Aramapo come in this game. Uh, no one had a loss. The O must go. The O did go, uh, except if you're counting on the scoreboard. Ramapo 0, Mainland 56. This thing was 42 nothing at halftime. Um, I think we knew Mainland had the edge going in. We, yes. I don't think we had a 56-point spread. I'm going to just say right now, I think even though this is just the second year of state finals in uh, public schools in New Jersey, I would think, say in the, next, in the next 20 years, I've saved this on whatever device you want to, I would say in the next 20 years, there will not be a public state championship that's as lopsided as 56 and nothing. You might, I might say for, I mean, I don't use the they're never ever, you can't say forever, but that, that's crazy. The fact that they come out... And what did I, what, what was it, scoring on their first eight touches, nine touches? Like, they just went down, down, boom. It was, you know, it was a clinic. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, both sides of the ball. Um, Chucky Smith, what a job, right? Like, coaching Mainland, to your point, a couple years ago, you're like, you know, they're, we're starting to talk about them. And, you know, look, we, and we know Coach Folsom, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. West Effort. We know Coach Watts is over there, too. You know, but Chucky's, Chucky's the guy, right? I mean, he's the head coach yeah. there. I mean, everybody says, you know, I hear people talk about, oh, he's got all the... Listen, you, I, when you got to manage those guys too, right? I mean, and if you know Coach Folsom, I mean, you don't... <laughs> you know, he knows his stuff, as does Watts. But Coach Smith, it's a great... You know, it was awesome for him to, to you know, to get that first state championship for him. Um, the pride of her sinus. Yeah. So, good stuff. If you look at... The final drive, I think the backups were in, and I think there was also possession where they kneeled the ball at the end of the first half, I think. So if you count that, you work your way back. They made, I, I don't remember, Mac, I think they only had total in that span in 10 weeks, six possessions that didn't end in the score. Yeah, I mean, they, they, you talk about hitting all cylinders at the right time. Um, you know, they're a commercial for January weight room. Yeah. I mean, that, that's, that's what, I, yeah, look, I mean, you look around South Jersey and the teams that have won um, at a consistent level mm -hmm. on a consistent basis, you know, they're, they're not just showing up starting the deal in August. Right. Right. I mean, it's a January. I mean, some will say, hey, they started their weight room this week. Probably so, right? Because the way that schedules are now. It used to be, you know, if you got to a state final, it was the first or second week of December, so you gave the kids off maybe mm -hmm. two weeks and you went at it again. But after the teams have had two weeks off, um, you know, it, it, it's getting after it. Uh, and that's, you know, and that, that shows in this playoff run because the lifting of the weights and the training mm -hmm. isn't just about how much you can squat or deadlift or hang yeah. clean. It's taking care of the bodies. You look around at mainland, there's not, dudes don't look like they can get hurt. Right. Like they just, they just, people are bouncing off of them. They just, they, 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 they land funny. They bump right yep. back up. They're bouncing off dudes. It's just, and you see other teams that have that. Cohen Cook, who is one of their best athletes all around, I think he plays a sport in every season and is good at it. Right. Um, he got oh, the by hat. the way, playing a sport in every season is, is is good as weight room, too. So I don't want to be selling against the sports, right, too. Right, right. He got the hat. Um, he looked like Gale Sayers out there. I mean, there was a couple runs. He's just stopping and throwing somebody to the side. Let's just, for a second, let's just talk about these three top rushers for mainland in this game. Or Dilly. 13, Stephen Ordilly, 13 carries, 186 yards, three touchdowns, 14.3 uh, per carry. Cohen Cook, 11 for 136, two touchdowns, 12.4 a carry. Rocco DiBiaso, 9 for 94, 
uh, and a touchdown, 10.4 for carries. So you have three guys averaging a first down on the touch. I, I was just going to ask, Rod, did they, have, <laughs> did they have a second down? I mean, I don't know, man. From the game that I was watching, they did. <laughs> I mean, it, it. They might have had a second down when they took a shot on first down, like a yeah. shot play. Yeah. They had second and 10, then they went and picked up 13 yards on some sort of buck sweep or soft and, baby and, toss. And to the other point, though, time of possession. And thank you. The, the people at Rutgers do a great job. You get Excellent. the whole drive chart and everything. It's Excellent. like the only time you get this state championship. So thank you so much. But um, you're looking here, touchdown drives, 234, 134, 303, 254, 119, 28, 115. They had one touchdown drive of 545. The rest of these are boom, 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 touchdown. Yeah. Well, it's because they run the ball inbounds too. Well, right. here's the thing: they, the shot plays too. We, you know, they, they you know, so many teams are happy. Oh, we have to stop the run, which you do. Yeah. You start trying to stop the run with nine and a half. Yeah. Your 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 eyes, the eye discipline that we talked about last week on the board. You're looking at the wrong stuff. Next thing you know. <laughs> There's a, there's a wing yes. and a tight end backpedaling, catching a ball like this. Yeah. I mean, that's not a shot. To, I mean, I'm sure uh, uh, right. there's two, but you can be. You don't have to. It doesn't have to be miraculous plays on some of the things when you get your eyes in the wrong spot. You're absolutely right. But one thing I don't want to get lost in all of this is the job that that defense yeah. did. I mean, right. I Watts. think they yeah. held them to, like, what, 113 yards total yeah. throughout the whole Something game? Like right. Yeah. I mean – one of the rushing running backs had <laughs> more yardage by himself yeah, of course than did. their whole yeah. team. So it was just a complete team domination up there at Rutgers. They just straight dominated. Right. I think I think the other piece of it, too, that was so impressive, and, and Kevin Minnick mentioned this, his story reflected that on NJ.com, and, and I agree with him. I don't know that in a game of that magnitude you've seen a team play as perfectly – as mainland played. I mean, I can't even think of like a major game in in any level of football where I've sat and watched and said, I guess maybe like Georgia TCU last year, what was that, 56 to 7? Where you're just like, Look at I'm gonna What could you go what could trip. you go back and fix for mainland in that game? Nothing. Trip, it's all as, as good on, as it could go. Rod, I'm getting buzzes. 28 nothing, 1984, Pensauk and Cherokee. Sauken, that I, that I, was I, a, that, that's right. that was the one I forgot. Uh, I knew it was listen, I knew I, I knew on. that was the one. I'm getting live text. <laughs> I knew that was it. <laughs> it was it was it was definitely Pensauken now that I'm thinking of it in the eighties. Uh, half as many points as Mainland scored in this game. But what, what you said, Mark, I mean, for me, it wasn't how they performed solely in the championship game at Rutgers. Yeah, it was the it run. It was yeah. the run. They yeah. went, I mean, this was three weeks. They knocked off two number one seeds. Oh, yeah. So, well, and then went oh, and knocked and, off. You know, and and they knocked wow. off Millville. That's the, right, but the, uh, but the, not only the one seed, the last year state champion. It's not right. like they were, yeah. like, you know, and they were new to this. The run is just, I yeah. mean, it's up there when you think about it and put it all in perspective. It's like, you know, when when you go back and you look at the moment of the lead up, if that was really the game of the year we were looking for all season. Was that mainland Millville game? And Mainland expanded at the end. I think it was about seven points the end of third quarter, 14 early in the fourth, whatever. At the time, you're like, man, Mainland really, like, finished that game. Now you're looking back and you're like, man, Millville played them pretty tight. Like, now <laughs> you're like, hey, Millville played them, uh, you know, they <laughs> – well, These other teams, and it got worse after that, well, you know? Well, well which, which lends itself to the two best teams in Group 4 in the state. Played, we're, yeah, we're mainland Played Millville. each other in the quarterfinal. Yeah, I agree. We're, main, we're mainland in Millville. I it agree. just happened, you know, it's kind of... Sometimes Ohio State plays Michigan in the, you know, on one side of that bracket, as we know. We're not and I would say the same... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's rubbing it in. I would say the same thing in Group 3. Uh, the state championship, uh, to me, was Camden and Delsey, and Delsey won that game. And Delsey wins the Group 3 state championship yep. over West Essex in the nightcap in the rain at Rutgers, 28-3. to They're up 6-3 at halftime. 
they get a Wayne Adair 32-yard run in the third quarter. Zach Maxwell scores for a one-yard run in the third quarter. And then Dan Russo, two-yard run uh, late. 28-3, Delsey Caps, the state championship season. One loss, and that came to Winslow early in the year. Uh, this was a game where I think going in, you, you thought – I, I thought Delsey would win handily. Uh, the mainland game, I wasn't as sure because I looked at Rampo's passing game. They had a really great right. year offensively, some big numbers. Um, but I thought that Delsey would be able to impose their will. And that's what they did in this game as it wore on. They were just too big uh, for West Essex. Russo and, and Adair were great. The big line were great. And again, the defense. They gave up three points to this West Essex team who made a state championship. It was really, it was really a beautiful game for Delsey. And they come back to the scene of the crime where they lost old Tapan a year prior. They made things right and they won. Now, Wayne Adair, 12 carries, 134 yards. Stan Bruce with 22 rushes, 129 yards. Maxwell, seven for 63. Four touchdowns between the three of them, the three headed monster. The one thing I will say about this team, and as well as mainland, let's flash back to last year at this time. If you said, what are the biggest question marks for you about Delsey next year and mainland next year? I would have said, well, Delsey's going to lose Jared Shoppy, their linebacker running back, who's kind of the heart and soul. Right. And mainland's going to lose Jabril Mace, their running back, who was... Uh, an all South Jersey, all state players going to Villanova does it all. Yes, he does. Stephen Ordilly and Dan Russo, in filling those roles as best they could, came this year, and their positions where you said, "This is you, you look at this team. This is where the question mark is." Those guys filled the role as well, if not better than could ever been imagined, and became all state players this year. I mean, that was huge. Russo was incredible offensively and defensively. 22 carries, right? All season. He, he, you saw him, right? Workhorse. Right. Like, so here's what's interesting. And they'll never admit to it. You put Marchese and someone like Clyde Folsom in a room, and you ask them, would you rather have one tail or three of this and that? Yeah. And the three, the tail, the one might be the better prospect, right. the better all-around mm -hmm. athlete player. But when they get that three-headed monster in that offense with their quarterbacks, it's a four-headed monster. Their cues can run, too, and yeah. they can throw it. Like, so, I'm not, I'm not, you know, every, you know I'll take a Jabril Mace every day on twice on, yeah. you know, as they say, but when you got the offenses they run, they're not tailback, you know, they're not tailback-driven offenses. It's not, you know, seven yards, you know, or offset sidecar back. It's, it's fullback, wing, yeah. misdirection, boom, boom. And even with both teams running a wing T, they run them a little bit different. Yeah. Like when you watch them, it looks a Definitely. little bit different. Sure. With, you know, with Russo and then you flip it over to mainland, they have different cats coming. You got Ardilly, you got yep. Cook, and then next thing you know, you're looking up and you see a pass down the field to Tyson. Like, it, it's, it just looks different, but it's very similar. But the wing T guys have, like, it's like they get this, um, you know, they have this map in their brain, mm -hmm. right? They get this map in their brain. They're like, okay, I got the big fullback this year. So we're going we're gonna to trap. We're going we're gonna to live off of the trap. Stop the trap or you're done. Stop mm -hmm. the trap or you're done. Well, we don't have the big fullback this year. So we're going to live off the buck, off of the trap. We're going to steal the trap every once in a while, but we're going to get the buck or you know, and then oh, we got we got Tyson. Yep, <laughs> so right. so now we can we're gonna sneak a shot or two off of this play action, off of this jet. Like so, you know, some years they don't you know they don't have the like so they sit there and go, all right, what do I? They're not they're not they don't try to force. Yeah. You know, there's enough in that and there's enough in that toolbox yeah. of the wing T. Okay, this year I'm gonna be this dominant, or this year I'm gonna do this now. In an ideal world, when you look at the spread that they have, you know, the, 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 the carries per guy, you mm -hmm. know, when you see 12, when you see a wing team, 12 and 13, 12 and 13, 12 yeah. and 13, that's, and think about it, 13 carries. If every kid knows he's getting 10 to 12, he's making the most out of his 10 right. to 12. Right. Right? And furthermore, 
the defense for Delsey, one, they allowed one of 11 third down conversions. And that's a recipe for success. And West Essex continually started inside their own 25. You're not getting first, you're not a big play offense in West Essex. You're not getting first downs on third down, and you're starting in your own end. That's a recipe for disaster. And, and Rod, you, you brought up defense, right? Like, we've, we always talked about, if you, in high school, I, I can't, maybe, maybe college different. Now, if you can put a nasty defense on the field, mm -hmm. you're going to win games. You're going to win games. Because you can, you can make an offense out of the nasty defense. You give me a nasty defense, and I'll say, all right, there's my center, there's my two guards, there's my, okay, he, he, he. Oh, you know, a quarterback. Oh, guess what? I got a safety. Guess what? He'll yeah. play gun and he'll get the ball and he'll, and he'll sprint the ball. I, nasty defense travels, right? Yep. It was evident here, right? In West Essex, three points? Yeah. Right? Ramapo? Nothing. I mean, yeah. Three, that's, it, we talk about the wing T side of the ball, but mm -hmm. that nasty defense. The story I always told about Delsey winning the championship back when it was South Jersey and the running back saying he, to celebrate he was going to go run, uh, he was going to go lift weights that night when he got back to Franklinville has been usurped by a better end of uh, championship game exchange with Delsey. After this game on the field, uh, watching the kids, getting a video of, of everything, Coach Marquez was uh, next to me. And he said, uh, how are you doing, Mark? I said, good. How are you, Coach? He said, I'm all right. Is it a lie? I'm all right. And uh, the assistant said, he's a man of many emotions, Sal. I said, yeah. Uh, he said, we didn't play well in the first half. He pulled a, <laughs> he pulled a Jalen Hurts on he you. Play, hey, yeah, man. Standard. <laughs> Exa exactly. Like and, standard. Uh, you know, that. anybody who knows Sal, that sums up Sal. I mean, he is as level as it gets. Um, and congratulations, Sal. A great win. And Chuck Smith, like you said, I mean, these guys are the third and fourth state championship winning coaches in South Jersey history. Yeah, big right? time. Right? Reagan and Ayala and these two now. Um, yeah. You know, they go, it's, they it's go important stuff. The beginning of the stuff. list. And uh, shout out to Delcy, Jim Rafferty. Coached at Delsey for a million years. Girls, boys, track. Was an assistant football coach. Coach with Oberg. Yeah. He passed this last year. His, his son played for me at Eustis, mm -hmm. Jimmy Rafferty. Um, you know, Raf's looking down on this Delsey team with some pride. Oberg he's, he's, too. Yeah, yeah, Obi too. Um, these guys are, and Sal is just a generational, generational yeah. of just being part of that Delsey family. So that's, that's so, so, you know, it's good. When you see some of these teams, you're like, you know, you, you, you feel good for these coaches that they're in these spots. Delsey's also one of the few places where um, the staff that they have are guys you recognize from all the other sports they're involved in. Of course. You know, you got Rob Bryles coached girls basketball, uh, track and field and flame, uh, Maxwell and wrestling. These guys, uh, Sal in track and field, like they're a part of uh, Smith in, in baseball. Like they're a part of the unit. Of the coaching guys, yeah, right. Like it's not. Ah, oh, we'll see you next football season. Yeah. You see them the next season. They're in the, the, they're in the fabric that. of the school. These kids play multiple sports. Like I said, if they're not playing multiple sports, they're in the weight room. You yeah. know, and and you know, guys are running track and throwing things and throwing throwing shot puts and throwing discus and javelins and um, you know, you know, it's it's it's. There's nothing better than competitive for kids in high school, in my opinion. Right. I mean, yeah. if you can. That you know, we there's not we're not going to have a multi-sport athlete show right now, but that's it's it, it just shows that Delsey down there, their coaches are multitasking, building athletes, and they have been for a while. Yep. Um, all right, we're going to take a break. We're going to talk about Group Five and Group Two happen Monday night. We're going to touch on that. We're going to also mention the non-pub championship games as well, and we have a couple topics that we're going to discuss and try to figure out here uh, on the South Jersey Football Frenzy show, show season finale. So sit tight. We'll be right back after this. Champions are made through training and hard work. At Zubac Athletic Performance, we have helped over 40 athletes reach the NFL and have dozens of NCAA players in multiple sports using our programs today. Located in West Berlin, New Jersey, we can help you and your athletes reach your goals. Visit our website for more information. 
Enthusiastic about football? Become a part of the NJFOA South Football Officials Association and join us to officiate high school football. A diverse community of over 250 members oversees every high school football game in southern New Jersey. Our team upholds the highest standards of the game. We are advocates for sportsmanship, guardians of player safety, and champions of fair play. Are you ready to join us on the field? The 2024 Cadet Class kicks off on March 6th. Be sure to secure your spot now by registering on our website or scanning the QR code from this ad. But that's not all. You can score a touchdown with reimbursement. When you pass the class, the state of New Jersey will give you $300 back towards your initial cost. Ready to put on the stripes and join the team? Become a football official with the NJFOA South today. Welcome back, football fans, to the South Jersey Football Frenzy Show. Um, we are going to talk about the rest of the state championships here that we didn't touch on in this first segment. I do not, Emil, I do not have thoughts on the division realignments because I have not seen them yet. They came out right before the show. If anybody wants to throw those alignments into the chat, we can discuss them maybe a little bit in our, in our third segment here. But in our second segment, first let's touch on what happened Monday night at Rutgers. Westwood, with a goal line stand and a 99-yard drive uh, to force overtime against Rums and Fairhaven in the Group 2 state final. And then Westwood, the Cardinals win it in overtime, 21-20. to Their extra point goes in. Rumsens does not. Westwood, a team led by quarterback Robbie Karsich, one of the best players in the state this year. Um, that's it. Think about that. You got Rump. Yeah, they R go on Rump stop, right. 99 yard drive. R R Incredible. Rumson's going to make it 21 7, game over. Correct. Game over, 21 7. Nope. Goal line stand, 99 to your point, tie it up. Then win in overtime. I, and I hate, I hate missed kicks. Like, you know, I hate winning things, but it happens. And, and they miss theirs and they make theirs. And that's, that's 21 20. And that's a state final. Group two champs. Group 2 champs, congratulations to Westwood. Well-deserved storybook ending um, and probably at this point the best state championship we've had so far and maybe the best we'll have in a while. I said I don't think we'll see a 56 nothing game uh, in a while. We might not see a game as good as that westwood Rumson game in a while either. 21-20, Westwood is your Group 2 state champion. And Rumsett comes up short two years in a row in that game in, in heartbreaking fashion both times. So. Yeah, they did. Um, now, Group 5, we knew this would happen. Toms River North wins this thing 23-13 over Passaic County Tech, PCTI, in a rematch of the year before. Toms River North does it again, back-to-back. Tight, -back. Tighter than I thought. I mean, 23-13, I, 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 I just th I thought Micah Ford was going to do, you know, he is still the guy. Um, but I, I, I thought that. It was going to be a little tighter, I mean, a little bigger bigger spread. but Yeah, Tom's River North, um, absolute machine, yeah. right? And I, I've, I've seen it. Yeah, you've seen it. We're going to touch on them again here in a second. But I want to give a shout-out to the non-pub champions. You had Red Bank Catholic wins non-pub B at MetLife on Tuesday, 14-7 to over DePaul. And in non-pub A, Bergen Catholic, 24, Del Barton, 14 in the state final. The Crusaders add another trophy to their crowded case. Uh, they got a lot of crowded trophy yeah, cases. Yeah, they do. Now they're, now they're, yep. uh, but let's let's go back to Tom's River North. The conversation that uh, was going through the press box on Sunday night and will continue to play out in uh, different rooms this week and until the end of the year stuff comes out is who is the number one public team in the state. The question is, is it Mainland at 14-0, who won a state championship by 56 in Group 4? Or is it Toms River North, who lost two games in the regular season? Uh, those two games were Red Bank Catholic, who won the state championship in non-pub B, and Red Bank Catholic finished 10-1. and Their only loss was to Bergen Catholic, who won uh, non-pub A. They beat Toms River North by 7 in overtime, and... The other loss for Toms River North was Donovan Catholic by 14, a non-pub A on the road. And I believe, I want to say Michael Ford didn't play in that game. I, I believe so due to injury. So we can throw that out. So 
The question is, who wins out of mainland Tundra North? Is that what you're asking? Yes. Somebody's asking right They now? have two mutual opponents. Uh, the mutual opponents both were at Battle at the Beach. Another testament to the Battle at the Beach slate. Tom's River North beat Millville 14-7. to Mainland beat Millville by, I think, 22 or, or 21 in the playoffs. Like we said, it was close until uh, the fourth. And Mainland beat Washington Township by 19, I believe, in the Battle of the Beach. And Tom's River North uh, beat Washington Township 49-14 to in the sectional final. But the, but the beach games are early, so the fact that, you know, the, you know, they're both teams playing the other team on the flip side. But what are you asking? Who's, who's, it's a, who's, it's who's, a conversation of who's the best public team in the state. I think when you look at the state rankings, uh, I'm not going to – I don't do a state ranking, and I, but I'm familiar with them enough to tell you this. I, Bergen Catholic is going to be number one, mm-hmm. and I would think Red Bank Catholic will be number two, especially since they beat Tom's River North. Uh, in a game. So it really comes down to who's number three, and number three will be the top public team, I would imagine, and that's either going to be Mainland or Bur- or um, Tom's River North. I think you could see there. a different team in a different poll. Uh, I will say this. Mainland is a team that has looked incredible all season outside of, you know, maybe the Hamilton game uh, was the one hiccup. They win that game by score. Playing right now, they've been dominant. At the same time, I've seen Micah Ford run behind the right side of that line, and I've seen the things he can do and and the guys they have on the outside defensively. Um, Back-to-back group five champs. And I I just think the resume, too, the teams that they've played, they're probably leaning towards uh, Tom's River North. I mean, when you're looking at Donovan Catholic, Red Bank Catholic, Millville, you know what I mean? Those teams like that, they're going to... Right. Well, know. and Group 5, I think Group 5 in South Jersey hasn't been as strong as Group 4 the last couple of years. Right. Um, Correct. But overall, I mean, Cherokee's a pretty good team, and Tom's River North beat them 33-6. to six. Uh, And I'm not saying Winslow isn't a good team also, who mainly be 41-7. It's just a difficult conversation when you're back-to-back Group 5 champ. Um, and, and arguably, you know, best... I would love to... Like somebody told me at the, at the thing, I would love if these two teams happened to show up at the same field with their pads. <laughs> I, that would be a real shame if that just... Eh, wow, is that you, Michael Ford? Wow, is that you, Jamie Tyson, Stephen Ordilly? Uh, oh, yeah, wow. Let's, trying to let's get, see. Right in between Times River all, North there, Mainland. There, maybe a little battle at no the more, beach. There's no more tournament champions in any sport. There never was one in football. Yeah. Right. He wants to go to a state championship. Now he wants a tournament of champions for football. I'm not going to lie. I said the same thing yesterday. Right. Listen, we get a, a $10,000 stipend or something put yeah. up for it. We need some sponsorships or something. Right? I mean, so. I the get war it. at the shore. <laughs> I get you like, Look, now you can't, you know, maybe do they open up against each other next year? But it doesn't, but you got no Micah Ford. So yeah. it's, it's, yeah. it's different. different. So um, this Tom's River North run is pretty impressive. Yes. Have, and I'm, and this is, this is, ab, I'm not, discussing this versus mainland. I'm just saying on its own face right here. To go back-to-back state champions in Group 5 mm-hmm. is mighty impressive. Um, and a, 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 another one where I don't know when we'll see that again. We don't know because these are the initial conversations of, of state championships. Like Rod said earlier in the season, I think if you asked us with some truth serum the first few weeks, we would think Woodbury was going back-to-back. Things happen. You don't end up end up getting there. But uh, Tom's River North, really impressive, and Mainland impressive. This is a debate that will play out. I do not think that either side is wrong. And I think uh, if Mainland's ranked ahead of them, Tom's River North fans have every right to be uh, right. PO'd. And if vice versa, I think Mainland has uh, the right, too, to say, hey, we... What more do you want us to do? We went undefeated we and won it. by 56 in a state championship right. game. We made, we made a state championship. Your team's statement. really good, too, but you won by 10. 
I think both teams have a legitimate argument, though. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. You know, I, I could see them one, too. I mean. Now, here's the thing. If you actually want to play it out in some sort of simulator here, like, you know that, that you said, Micah Ford's going to bleed for yardage, right? Like, yes. And then it's the three-headed monster of Mainland and Tyson on the out. Like, so, and not that, not that Tom, Tom River North has other weapons as well, too. Yeah, so, they have Tariq Council. They yeah. have some guys. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, they got guys. So, um, it would be, it'd be a fun watch. It'd be a fun watch, yeah. We'd watch it. Yeah. We'd broadcast it live. We'd no. play by play. Sure. They let us have it. Sure. Um, the West Jersey Football League divisions. Here's what I have, courtesy of Chris Baker, sent this over quickly. I know I saw some comments in here, too. Let's just talk about, uh, well, let's go over the top five, six divisions here. Division, Division one. one. Mainland, Winslow, Millville, Cherokee, St. Augustine. Uh, that's that's four of our best public teams the last few years. And, and St. Augustine, of course, has been our top non-pub here recently. Division two, Williamstown, Timber Creek, Kingsway, Washington Township, Delcy. You have a, a group, two group three teams in Timber Creek and Delcy, a group five in Williamstown, Kingsway, and Washington Township. So you have that one seems regionally, it's a little bit closer um, in good. terms of how. Right, a couple fives, a couple threes, and they're good teams, and they're, you know, neighbors. Division three, Rancocas Valley, Lenape, Shawnee, Eastside, and Camden. So you have. Two Camden schools, you have two Lenape regions, uh, Lenape school district schools, and RV, which is down the road from uh, Lenape and Shawnee as well. Division four, Atlantic City, Hamilton, Cedar Creek, Ocean City, Holy Spirit. It's not very difficult to figure out this division. It's very much uh, geographically constructed, it seems. Uh, again, some neighborly games there. Division five, Pleasantville, Paul to six, Seneca. Gloucester, Haddonfield, Willingboro. That's you got a lot of That's you got a lot of, of ingredients into that into that soup. You got <laughs> right? four group twos, Seneca group three, Paul to six and non pub. Paul to six and Seneca have shared divisions here recently. Um, you know, Willingboro and Pleasantville played in the playoffs. Gloucester and Haddonfield played in the playoffs uh, last two years for those. And then your big group one bracket, division six, not bracket. I'm sorry, a uh, pool, Shallock. Glassboro, Pensgrove, Woodstown, Woodbury, Salem. So, so you, you, it seems like they listened a little bit when I complained about the Cherry Hill Mall or something. Like there is some geographic ties; they're not just going by size. Again, then the flip side of this question is going to be: Who are your crossovers? I mean, this is well. I, mean, I think it brings up an interesting point that you know, that's the part of this this deal where that's up to your staff and uh, and arranging those things, finding your crossover and figuring that out. And, you know, if you're not happy with your division, go find the crossovers that make sense to you. Right. You know, I, 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 I like your competitive. Coach. I mean, you have, you have, what, you have five teams in each division, four, you know, four division games, five division games. So... From what I'm seeing, I, I can see there, there's nothing here that seems in this top in the top six divisions where I'm like, oh, this is way out of left field. You know, I can I can see why these teams ended up together. They seem like similar programs, most of them. But again, I you know, there's two things I know about football coaches. I lo well, there's three things. I love them. I love talking to them. All that stuff. That's one thing. The second thing is they'll do anything to win, almost, you know, and the, they love to win. And the third thing is they'll find a way to complain about schedules and PowerPoints. That's it. I mean, I, I, I have heard it from every coach in South Jersey. If you say you have it, you're lying. Somebody has a gripe about their schedule. It doesn't matter if they go 10-0 and 0 right down the middle, if they go... It one might, and it, one and nine. It's a travel. It might be a travel thing. It might, you know, there's there's something. There's, it's look the schedule. And some of and some of those gripes are are legit. You look at it, you're like, man, you did get a bad. You must have made somebody really <laughs> mad, man, because they handed it to you. And some of them you say, man, look, you're crying over nothing. You just go ahead and you go ahead and play your games. But but there's always going to be something like that. It's like the college football playoff, man. There's always going to be somebody that should have got in over somebody else. What do you think about? I think you just have to do your crossover games. You have to really think about um, 
schools that you want on your schedule and try to get those teams if you can. Well, Just remember, that, I mean, that's relatively new. Like, before you were given your crossover right. games, right? Mm-hmm. It was, like, I'm going to tell you, my first year at Lenape, you know, here, here's Williamstown. Here's Timber Creek. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Thanks. Thank I, you. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> like, you know. Um, well, but, unless, unless, hey, but you take your lumps, and that's how you learn, right? If you, yeah. We would say those first couple years, this is who we want to be like. Yeah, the, the, the bad part about the whole um, – seating and the brackets and putting you in the different divisions is that it's taken into account two years ago like from it's the last two years right and then you get the new schedule like i'm looking at some of them just hypothetically and just looking at them you know you have the winslows the the mainlands the cherokees the saint augs the difference is if if you were playing with heavy seniors and juniors oh, yeah. and now it's going to be a down year where you have freshmen and sophomores that are like, oh, oh, yeah. you're going to take your lumps you're right. going to take I mean, some can lumps you, can you change it that's why you know i've heard you've heard me talk about in previous shows some sort of geographical relationship because even if on a even on a down year mm-hmm. it, I'll take just a you know the the RV Lenape deal right yeah those teams could be down some years mm-hmm. you know they still typically have a pretty good thing going like Shawnee Cherokee Shawnee Lenape right those Camden you know East Side versus Camden I mean that those you know you're gonna have they're always going to be typically mm-hmm. not always but competitive games so you know like, but you're right Rod you can't you you hey like Seniors graduate, right? <laughs> <laughs> Nobody's going down to the eighth grade and saying, right. "Hey, what kind of dudes?" Or you know, how did the Mount Laurel Midgets do last right. year? I mean, and we look at just take uh, Mainland. They just mm-hmm. had Jabril Mace or Dilly, mm-hmm. Jamie Tyson, Watson. I, I mean, who's coming up after those guys? Right. They may have a down year, but they're going. Listen, because you were good. Yeah. Thank That's you. how it works out, man. Right. Thank your thank your state championship brethren that <laughs> you're now you're now yeah. playing with the big boys for at least right. two more years, and that's you know that's there's no perfect way to do this. I mean, right. And and the other point of it is, if you give a, a relaxed schedule and say, well, they're losing all their seniors, then you're gonna sit there and say, wait a second, Mainland went 14 and 0 and won 56 nothing in the championship, and they're gonna play teams that right. aren't the best teams in South Jersey, right? I mean, heavy is the head that wears a crown. If you're a if you're a program that every year you're in the playoffs and you go down these top divisions here, I I mean, Mainland, Winslow, Millville, Cherokee, Saint Augustine, Williamstown's been down the last couple of years. But Timber Creek, Kingsway, Washington Township, Delcy, RV, Lenape, Shawnee, Eastside, Cam, these guys have been in the bracket every year, and they're pretty good seeds usually. Um, you know, it's. Look at the guys at the bottom in those divisions. That's the ones I've always thought, like, if you can find a way right. to help programs on the rise, and we've seen that happen with, we saw it with Del Rand five or six years yeah. ago. We've seen it with uh, Pittman. We've seen it with um, Shalik. We've seen programs, you know, build themselves back up. And meanwhile, your power programs, for the most part, unless there's some type of serious change at the top or whatever, usually are still in that mix. So, and you know what coaches want out of their schedule is different for everybody. Right. That's, that's I want a truth. challenge. I want to stay down the street. I want to, you know, I want to that old cliche use or I don't know if it was you Mac, but I know the older coaches used to say, I want three I can win, three I'll lose and three that are toss-ups. Eh, well that, you know, who's deciding what the formula is? I think the days of Every that coach is, is different. Yeah, I think the days of that are, are kind of over. Right. Uh-huh. Well, because now, back then, back then, I'm going to, 1980s, only four teams made the playoffs, and there was only four groups. Right. And South Jersey section, you know, you you lost, you know, you lost two games, you weren't making a play. If you were six and two at the cut, you might not be making the playoffs. Yeah. And, I, listen, I sat at a dinner table with an angry guy who thought his team was pretty good that some years didn't make the playoffs. Yeah, those PowerPoints used to, used to. Right. Right. Yeah, so, you know, you're playing the game of the PowerPoints and trying to figure out who's what and this, that, and the other. So, I mean, now it's kind of like the, we, we talked about the college playoffs, right? Well, before it was nothing, 
I'm gonna explain this to my son. Then, then it was the, they picked the best two for a Top bunch two. of years, right? Then they picked four for the last 10, and then next year's gonna be 12. Now, I think. But let me say this about that. If you go through and look at the, ten, the 15 years or whatever from when the BCS started, when it was two teams in the championship, there was one year you could say maybe the best teams didn't play in it. That's it. That's it. One year. We had the top two teams every time. Oh, look, agreed. And people say, oh, we need more teams. And it was like, mm. now we got more teams. It's more games. There's going to be more games next year. And you're, you know what? We're going to watch Georgia beat, you know, whoever well, they, it is. Listen, listen, did they have in to In the make... first round, 48 nothing. Did, you like, got, uh, you won the playoff? All right, it's 56-7 last year in championship, whatever. Look, they didn't, look, they didn't. Did they have... And your team had to play Georgia in the first round. <laughs> look, they didn't, they don't have to go 12. <laughs> we, we, we went toe-to-toe, though. <laughs> we saying. went toe-to-toe. We, we held on. They don't have to go 12, <laughs> but, you know, in the colleges, they could go eight. Right. Or six. We had the right champion with two. That's what I'm saying is. You know, it can't always be both ways in this sense. The, the same people who want more teams in college can't want less teams in high school and less teams in the – I mean, this is the thing, man. You can't – So now it's got – There's it, always some, got, something else. The, the, the grass is always greener. Well, look, we the, want all the Turkey Day games <laughs> back. We want all this stuff. Hey. It's like – how many of those games did people go to? I watched flags, fights, suspensions into the next season, poor attendance, blowouts. Where was where, 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 what game did you go? Yeah, to? I've seen a lot of bad turkey Day you've games. Been going Not far apart. You've been going to bed. Right. Let's bring them all back. <laughs> you've been going to bad turkey day games. Yeah. The future is never. The answer in the future is never reinventing the past. Believe me that. It, well, I, 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 listen, I'm. I like a little bit of mixture. I think it's the way you can do it without ruffling everybody's feathers. Right, right, right. I, I, I like the, same, you, same. You know, like I, like I wanted the, somewhere. Like you know, I know Seneca played Cherokee, but for years, Shawnee playing Lenape, Camden still playing. Well, excuse, East, East, East side, side. Excuse me. Slash like, Wilson. Right. Yeah. So like, you know, that's. That you, you feel you, you're rushing around in the morning trying to figure stuff out. Try to now it's like it, it, the, the more don't feel right. It don't feel. It don't feel right. I, I, I you, my, you're not you're supposed to come home cold a little bit or you know everybody talking to each other too much a little bit about. And it's the whole setup. I had my brother and cousins yeah. and everybody texting me. Hey, what game you going to? Listen, I go to Cam the High. What time does it start? It's how, it starts at the same time. Right. Since you were in high school. Right. <laughs> you same know thing. what I mean? Like same I'm thing. telling them that it's right. just the. I like tradition um, of the Thanksgiving Day game. I won't have to get too too deep in of. I like that, but. And he's not old. Yeah. Yeah, I like it. I like waking up. I know what I'm doing. I'm getting my breakfast. I'm, you know, put my long johns on. I'm out to the game. Enjoy the game. Come home when I walk in the house. Get the smell going. Right. Oh, it's almost dinner time. I'm not, I'm not against Thanksgiving Day games. The teams that have them and want to have them can have them. But the idea that everybody needs to bring this back and this no, is the way it needs to no, be. No, no, I no, not that. Some of the biggest, best rivalries in South Jersey, the coaches and programs have told me. We're glad we got away with that, man. We're, we're glad it's over. We played for 100 years, and you know what? This is better. And that's the way it is, man. Tradition cool. doesn't always dictate Here's what's a question. Right. For some of those teams, are they still playing later in the season, or are they done in late October? In the past, some have been playing later. Right. I also, mean, your team's done in October. You got to schedule four consolation games to prepare for your Thanksgiving day. Well, game. that's the thing. Well, look, I get that now because you know, of the way that the, because of the way the schedule is. If you don't, if you lose the first round, if you don't make the playoffs, or you lose the first round of playoffs or your consolation game, waiting around three weeks to play a rival isn't isn't fun. Right. Now, look, I know we can't go backwards. We're not. We do have state championships. We do. But when years past, this week we would be getting ready for a sectional title next week. The, yeah. The fact there was right. state title back in the day, and we would have had 10 days after our Thanksgiving game. We'd still be in the mix right now in practice, getting, getting ready yep. to go, whether it be Rowan or Rutgers or fill in the blank. So, you know, I, I love, yeah, the true state championship's nice, but not, but it's, I, I agree with Rod. It, it's still, maybe it's us reminiscing. 
Because the kids might not, but it's us going back and seeing and the whole bit. I mean, for- it's, it's for, it's always going to gain, this is my point. You're always going to gain support for something that most people already did. Like, you know that? Like, we all are connected to something in the past that feels right. When you say, hey, let's bring back this thing that we used to do, most people did it. So they're like, yeah, let's do that. I was a kid. I was there. That doesn't mean it's what's right. It means what feels good to the majority. But oh, oh, we there have no state right. championships But there's now. no right or wrong here. If it feels right. If you it, still can have state championship games with a Thanksgiving game. They're going to finish everything by December 1. That's what they want to do. It's clear. That's what they want well, to do. Well, obviously that. It was so, clear. It's, it's, it's very clear. So I don't know how it's going to be configured and, and it can be worked out. But I'm just saying, at some point, they're all going to be probably gone. I don't know when it's going to be, but... Like it, we're like, down to what now? How many? Like you look at you look at the district I'm, like that I co- like Lenape Regional, right? So Lenape and Shawnee played each other for fifty some years on Thanksgiving Day. The Cherokee Seneca was obviously relatively new because Seneca was it, new. It's relative. No, it was yeah. rel- right. They're only twenty mm-hmm. years old at school. Mm-hmm. Fish coached every year for them. Well, interestingly enough, though, when Cherokee. And Seneca played this year. It was on Thanksgiving, and Lenape and Shawnee had given up that Thanksgiving game two years prior, or a year prior. So, like, this was the second year, I think, that Shawnee didn't play Lenape on Thanksgiving. So it's like the one that was only around 20 years is kind of still going. Still well, this went. was the last one. I know, but it was still going, right? It still went. And then the one that was around 50 has been out. You know, I... Hey, I say... I, it, if it's a tradition that you've been doing for a while and you can find a way to keep it going, keep it going. Like the Millville and, and Violin, right. that thing's going to flip-flop. I remember when Violin was getting the best of Millville at times. Like yeah. that, you know, you're going to have that. At Eastside and, and, and Camden, like, you know, we. I like those games because for us, it's, it's our homecoming, right? Yes. If, if you don't live in, in Camden, you don't, live in New Jersey, you're flying in, you're seeing family, you go to the Thanksgiving Day game, it's packed, you see all the people that you graduated with, it's just a different feel. Playing that game in October means absolutely nothing because uh, people aren't coming back to see that game right. at that point. So you're going to lose that feel, you're going to lose probably 600 people. Well, I mean, it was packed out that's, there for Thanksgiving. That's true. Yeah. But I was at that game last year, and you know what? For Camden High, it meant absolutely nothing because they came out there and they didn't have any interest in playing that game last year, not a wink of it. It's it, it, it means so. Something. I mean, the, it, it, it was good something. for the fans, but I was watching the the team, and they were ready to go have turkey from but, the beginning. Just well, get this I, thing I, over. You know, it's funny. We I've always said when we were in the, sp- it's always. The year we lost in the in the quarters, it's easier to play in the Thanksgiving. When you lose on the Friday or Saturday, and it used to be the sectional semifinals, like it was the sec- it was mm-hmm. the second to last game. So when you lose in that sectional semis, that next week, right, getting is tough to get ready for. But in in like the years where you've won that week, you've won the semis. You got some jump, right? You got a game, and then you you play a state final. Like, it's house money. You got a state final in 10 days. Mm -hmm. So we were in that role twice. That was a neat role. And then we were in a role where we lost earlier in the playoffs, and we had a week and a half to kind of lick our wounds, right? All right, let's get this back. But to your point, Camden loses last year, right? Like Right before. The the the, the loss right before Thanksgiving, the five-day loss right before Thanksgiving, that's the one you want to be like, all right, we're... You know, Mike, because you haven't gotten over it yet. You're still in the four day. You're in the morning period still, right? It's not done. I know it's not happening. Listen, the games man. are coming back. You know, no, are, I mean, I mean, yeah. look, man. It, it just, is all I'm saying is when when that's the point of let's just redo what we did in the past. People are always going to say, yeah, let's do that. Yeah. That's not how we move forward. That's not how it works. Like, yeah, I'm, I'm not mean, saying there shouldn't be Turkey Day. I'm saying that's always going to gain support because it's what. The most t- amount of people are used to. Be, being, be, I, I traveled a lot earlier on. 
a couple years ago, I used to be in Florida or Texas doing stuff with mm -hmm. youth and hosting games and things. And being down there, they will be playing Dece late in December. Yeah. You know, Texas State Championship is like December 15th or something like that. Oh, yeah. So, I mean. Six I think rounds of playoffs. Yeah, I just, I think it's a way it could be done. It's just if they want to do it or not. Yeah, New Jersey. I, that's just, <laughs> that's what it comes down to. Jersey doesn't like button up. <laughs> They never in like December. button up against other sports. Other sports, yep. And then now they really don't. They they not only don't want to buff up, they want to buffer. Mm -hmm. Like they want right. space between. You look at you look at with the ending of of winter to spring. You look at now with everything ended last weekend and basketball. Blah blah blah. Yeah. So I mean, with with that, and and this is a question that I have. Some schools, yeah, they they're smaller. They're they're football guys may play basketball. But this day and age of specialized sports, it's not like it used to be where you have 10 kids off the football team who are the 10 basketball players in varsity. No, right. You're right. You know, certain schools have a varsity basketball program and they dare not play football. No. You know what I'm saying? Nope. And, and, and even right. in track and certain sports, you it's, it's not like it, 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 it used to be. Interestingly enough, you know, your group fives could probably play football till mid mid December. <laughs> right. Yeah. And your group fours. Mm -hmm. Your threes maybe a little earlier. Your two. Like group one kind of needs to be done around Thanksgiving. Yeah. but Makes sense. You know, it's kind of like that's kind of because those group ones, you know, you go to say Mountain Lakes, those kids are playing, some of those kids are playing, are wrestling and playing basketball next week, this week mm -hmm. at, at a group one school. Where a group five school, to your point, Rod, basketball players aren't typically playing football. Not not the good ones. We 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 try to get them. We we try to get you them. Try. We do. <laughs> um, here's some scores we had from Turkey Day. I think we have about 11 games. Borntown beats New Egypt 26 nothing. They lead the all-time series 13 to 10. Woodbury 40, Gateway 13. Fourth straight win for Woodbury. They lead the all-time series 34 to 12. Gloucester beats Gloucester Catholic 33 nothing. 25, 23, and 1 is the all-time uh, series record there in favor of Gloucester. Paul to 6, 55, Camden Catholic, 0, Holy Spirit, 37, Atlantic City, 26, Pittman, 29, Clayton, 13, Millville, 65, Vineland, 0, 152nd time they played the country's longest Thanksgiving rivalry. Vineland still leads the series 67, 66, and 19. I guess that one didn't count for two for Millville. Florence, 24, Riverside, 16. The fin final game for Coach Frapoli, Damian Ricketts runs 22 times for 163 yards. Three touchdowns, Haddonfield, 31, Haddon Heights, 7. This was the WIP Turkey Bowl. Declan McCarthy runs for touchdown throws for one. Audubon, 42, Haddon Township, 12. Rod, you have a video from this? Yes. See if you can play this thing. I know it's far away, but take a look here on the left if you can see it. Jacob Holland gets this hook and lock and runs it in the offensive line. Yo! Pretty cool. Oh, Yo. my God. 42 to 12 over the Hawks. They've won 11 straight in that situation. Camden East Side 20, Camden 8, five straight wins for the Tigers over Camden. And Seneca sends Coach Bill Fisher out a winner 13 to 6. I saw that one over Cherokee. Um, you know, there's, so there's about 11 Turkey Day games left, and next year there'll be 10 because Seneca Cherokee is wiping it out, so there'll be 10 or less. Um, but that's still 10 more than we have the rest of the season. We have zero left. We have one segment left. We're going to come back and wrap it up and say goodbye for the 2023 campaign here from the South Jersey Football Frenzy Show. So sit tight. We'll be right back after this. Enthusiastic about football? Become a part of the NJFOA South Football Officials Association and join us to officiate high school football. A diverse community of over 250 members oversees every high school football game in Southern New Jersey. Our team upholds the highest standards of the game. We are advocates for sportsmanship, guardians of player safety, and champions of fair play. Are you ready to join us on the field? The 2024 cadet class kicks off on March 6th. Be sure to secure your spot now by registering on our website or scanning the QR code from this ad. But that's not all. You can score a touchdown with reimbursement. When you pass the class, the state of New Jersey 
will give you $300 back towards your initial cost. Ready to put on the stripes and join the team? Become a football official with the NJFOA South today. Champions are made through training and hard work. At Zubac Athletic Performance, we have helped over 40 athletes reach the NFL and have dozens of NCAA players in multiple sports using our programs today. Located in West Berlin, New Jersey, we can help you and your athletes reach your goals. Visit our website for more information. South Jersey, let me tell you about my friends over at SRA Home Products. SRA has been building sunrooms, pergolas, and patio covers for over 25 years. They've built more than 9,000 projects in the Delaware Valley. I've had the opportunity to be around owner Mike Fody. I have nothing but the best things to say about Mike and his crew. SRA is a gold accredited member of the Better Business Bureau under the elite provider status with Home Advisor, and they've racked up a number of Best of South Jersey awards in the past. They contribute to multiple sport associations and are huge supporters of Williamstown football. Find them online at srahomeproducts.com. Also want to give a shout out here to Coach Tom Padgett. He is Jersey Gridiron Scout, the premier position training academy and college recruiting platform for all middle school and high school prospects in the tri-state area. Registrations are now live for indoor winter training. Session one starts January 8th at Mavericks Training Facility in Moorestown, New Jersey. Email coach to confirm your spot, jerseygridironscout at gmail.com. All positions are offered as well as speed development training with Nick Dell of Elevate Performance Club. Recruiting consultation is part of the training. Let's plan your journey today. Check out his website, jerseygridironscout.com. Follow him on Instagram, at jerseygridironscout, and on Twitter, at Coach Pagic, P-A-J-I-C. Email him today to confirm your spot, jerseygridironscout.com. All right, Mac, this is it, man. I want to give a quick shout-out here to all the sponsors and those who help with the show. we got Chris Baker has worked diligently every week to send in our stats, our updates, our schedule. Thank you so much, Chris, for your help again this year. You make this thing go. Uh, we want to thank SRA, of course, Coach Padgett, and Matt Zubak, his athletic performance and the NJFOA South Chapter, the Admire Chapter, for their sponsorship of the show. Sully, of course, Studio B, Rod, as always, and the West Jersey Football Coaches Association, the presenting sponsor of the show. Thank you all so much. Um, without you, this show would not happen, and we've had a great run of it this year. Let's give a quick bon voyage to three folks who we know uh, three coaches who will not be around next season on the sideline. Coach Frapoli at Florence after 50 seasons hanging him up. Coach Fisher, uh, the only coach in Seneca history, hanging him up. And today we found out Brian Leary at Highland also stepping away. So best of luck to you three. I know there's probably more out there. Um, at this time of year, there'll be uh, some more that come up in future days and weeks. And some may surprise you, but I do know this. Uh, we wish you all the best, and thank you for all your help. And, and great guys, great coaches. And you know what? It's interesting. Coaches, like any different football coaches, typically step down at this. You know why? Because they know the next guy needs to get in. Yeah. They know the next guy, whoever it's going to be, has got to get it growing again. Saw Fish's last game, 13-6 uh, to six over Cherokee. And you know what? It was... It was, just, it was just really cool to see him go out a winner. Um, and, you know, it, it, it was an emotional time for him. And right. uh, he has such a, a good reputation around South Jersey. He's done so much, and he's helped us as well. It was an emotional uh, situation for everybody. I mean, he's, he's one of the best. So thank you, Fish, um, for your support of the show. And same with Coach Leary. I mean, I wasn't at Coach Leary's last game, but... He and Fish were on the same staff, of course. So, right. was, yeah. uh, you know, Coach Tomeo, I mean, everybody's looking at, will the three go out together? I'm just kidding here at, at Triton. <laughs> but, but seriously, uh, we had an incredible season, I think. And I, also, a new coach, we want to shout him out as Got well. To. I'm sure he's not watching the show. OBG a little but, bit? <laughs> but I think Dennis Thomas might be watching the show. Uh, we want to give a shout out to Coach Fran Brown, who is now going to be Syracuse head coach after being the D.C. down at Georgia. Uh, before that, he was up at Rutgers. Before that, 
He was out at Baylor, and before that, he was at Temple. Temple. Um, Coach Fran Brown, a Camden native, it's someone we're all familiar with in the region. Uh, this area is always rooting for Fran Brown. There will be even more uh, orange and blue. There'll be a lot. There'll be even more South Jersey kids probably in orange and blue, and there'll be even more support uh, from us for well, Franny, the Cues. Listen, Franny will tell you how it is. Franny does a great job. Franny gets guys, but Franny's going to tell you how it is. Yeah. And, you know, Franny spent time at a lot of good places that won a lot of football games. And just, you know, just because you're from South Jersey doesn't necessarily mean, you know, you got you, you got a path, right? You still got to win. Right. They, 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 he wants he, – he knows what Georgia looks like, right? And he knew what Barrow looked like, and he yep. he knows what it looks like. So That's they're going to – I think it'll be interesting. It'll be fun. Coach, uh, if you need a Syracuse football frenzy show, I think you know who to call. <laughs> We'll find a way to get there uh, through the snow. Um, no, I, I'm excited for Fran. I'm excited for Syracuse. And I'm excited for the South Jersey guys we know that are there. The Jaquez, the LaQuinn Allen, uh, Dennis Thomas and the coaching staff, uh, Elijah Clark. You know, who knows with the portal, you never know where kids are going to end up or what's going to happen where. Right. But for the time being, very happy um, with that situation. And also, um, I allude to this last show, I'm very happy with Bayshaw Tootin and the job that he did, excellent job. Bay Shaw uh, against the Who's, you made it happen. I will say this, uh, Mac and Rod, it is always a pleasure, you guys. I don't know if people know how much time you put in, but it's, uh, it's always great, man. This thing started out in a, like we always say, it started out in a little room with a sideways picture, and uh, yeah. here yes. we are. Yes, it did. Right, <laughs> Rod, I mean, you know. Rod's pushing all the buttons, doing all the stuff. Uh, Trib, Trib puts it all together, obviously. I just kind of throw in some old quips being in a, a, I guess I'm the gray hair, right? Yeah, oh, that's well, all right. Yeah, it's okay. But it's, it's interesting how the seasons always go. Um, they fly. It, it feels like it was September, right? They fly by quick. Um, you know, and the kids, it, you, watching the new group of kids, and it's high school football is better than ever. It's always, it's always great to see. Not only the fans, the kids, the every all the pomp and circumstance that happens yes. around it. It's it's such a it's such a great event. At even from game one all the way to the state finals. That's for sure. I mean, I just you know think about where we were in the summer. Yeah. First game. I mean, it's just everybody's hype. Yeah. You know, it's it. it you go through the um, the weeks and months of. The football season is a bunch of highs and a bunch of lows. Yeah, I mean, definitely. At one point, I I didn't know what was going on in the world because I was sick. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. you know, and it's just it comes and goes so fast. I just um, want to just tell all the parents out there, um, especially the parents, just enjoy it because one, football is not a sport where you know guys can just pick up and play when once they get mm -hmm. older. When it's over, it's over. No shoot arounds in football. <laughs> no shoot around. So. Enjoy every moment, um, and, and don't put too much pressure on your kids to, to be what you want them to be. Allow them to grow a little bit and come into their own, and they'll, you'll find that they'll enjoy it a lot more. Rod, you make, you make an you know. awesome point because a lot of folks get caught up in what's in anything, in everything, it seems. Not everything, but a lot of things. What's next? Mm -hmm. What's next? And, you know, the saying, smell the roses, is there. Yeah. there you got to... Enjoy, I think, I've said this on the show before, I say, I remember Dwight Hicks, All-American, Michigan captain, Super Bowl champion twice at the Niners, would come back and talk to Penn Salk and High, and how unbelievable it was to play mm -hmm. for Penn Salk. And right. I know there's a, thousands of stories right. of through South Jersey, but I was firsthand on some of those, um, and people like, you know, you're paying, people are like, you played, you played in front of 100,000 people in the big house. What are you talking about? He's like, man, there's nothing like high school football. Right. And even the big, even the pros will tell you that now. They yeah. just, like, you know, playing with your friends, hometown, home field, all that fun stuff. But enjoy that. Enjoy it. Yep. Enjoy, enjoy it. it. Yeah. And I was thinking about this on uh, Sunday night. You know, it's always fun being in that press box and talking to people across the state and talking about, you know, the season that was and, and wasn't. And, you know, South Jersey has a number of people who are dedicated to the sport, who love it and 
continue to give it great coverage. And I don't know if people in South Jersey realize how lucky they are for the people that are involved. Um, you know, it really is a special place, and it's a special community. And, you know, I've been around media everywhere, and I can just say the exception to the rule is South Jersey in that they're all good guys, mm -hmm. and they want to be there. Yeah. There's nobody who you're like, oh, man, I, you know, and, and that's the God's honest truth. People are, they're there for the right reasons. They're promoting the kids. They do a great job, and uh, we salute all of them, you know, and, and they know who they are. But it's, it's always a pleasure doing the show. I almost forgot we do have the final best 11 rankings. Are we ready? Go. Hold we, on. We got we got a drum roll. Drrr. I didn't have it. Just had the rim shot. All right. Best eleven rankings at number eleven. We have Paul to six, lost to eventual state champs in Group One or Group A. I'm sorry, in the non-pubs, Bergen Catholic. Great season for the Eagles. Number ten, Willingboro, lost to Rums at Fairhaven in the sec in the state semifinals in a close game in Group Two. Excellent season again for Coach Steve Everett and company. Number nine, Camden High. Camden uh, lost on Turkey Day in that rivalry game. They lost to Delcy in the state semifinals as well. Eight, Winslow. Winslow fell in their state semifinal to Mainland. Um, they also lost to Cherokee and Washington Township. Washington Township is number seven. They lost in the state, in the sectional final, I'm sorry, to Tom's River North. Holy Spirit comes in at number six. They lost one game in South Jersey this season. That was to St. Augustine. They lost in the playoffs to Red Bank Catholic by two touchdowns who went on to win non-pub. A, Holy Spirit at number six. And number five, Cherokee, uh, sectional title for Coach Glatz and company. They fell in the state semifinals to Tom's River North. Number four, St. Augustine, uh, our best non-pub, and lost in the non-pub A quarterfinals to Donovan Catholic by a point. They lost two games to Donovan Catholic this year, both very close. St. Augustine at number four. At number three, Millville. The Thunderbolts spent much of the season at number one. Um, came up against that mainland team that was just on a roll in, in the game we built as the game of the year in South Jersey. And Bus. Millville probably was the second best public team in group four, or I mean the second best team in group four in the state. They end up number three overall. And number two and number one are our two state champions. Uh, the only teams that come home with the ultimate hardware this year, they have to be two and one. We have Delcy, whose only loss came to Winslow early in the season, but Delcy since then, I think they won 10 games in a row. Uh, they win the state championship over West Essex. They're the group three champs. Uh, they made things right after falling last year. And number one, there's no question in South Jersey this year was Mainland, who as our buddy Coach Ab up in North Jersey told me, he said, by the time you start your show on Wednesday this week, Mainland will probably have scored again. <laughs> they went 56 nothing. a great year for the Mustangs. The only debate now is, is it the best Mainland team in history? And there's a lot to compete with. Ooh, we're talking Doug Strang and we're talking Clyde Folsom days. We, gotta go, we can go deep, right? Mainland Chucky has Smith. <laughs> incredible history. Receiver there. At Mainland, and it has been restored. Uh, Mainland is the top. South Jersey, it's the green and white, man. 14-0, and 0, unbelievable season. Did you think I'd pull a Doug Strang? <laughs> yeah, that, that, you pulled that one out. <laughs> it's a good one. Uh, thank you, everybody, for watching all season. It has been a pleasure. I hope you have a great holiday. Um, hopefully, we'll see you back here next year. For Rod Self at Studio B, if you need any needs, any shows, any podcasts, be sure to contact Rod. Coach Mack. Pensalk and uh, Guru, our favorite coach, and myself, Mark Tribble. Uh, we wish you all the best. Thank you for watching the South Jersey Football Frenzy Show. That is a wrap.